Ursula. What are you doing? I'm trying to get in touch with you. Today is an important day. Please, reply to me now. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't notice you contacting me. Ursula, what are you doing? It's our wedding day today. I know that. Well, I'm sure you know we confirmed it yesterday, didn't we? You said that you had to attend a drinking party, so you're staying at a friend's house. You said you'd be at the wedding venue by the time I got dressed, right? Yes, that's right. It's already past dressing time. Are you even aware of that? You see, I've been drinking with friends since last night and overslept. Huh? Why would you oversleep on such an important day? You don't have to say it like that. I was trying my best not to oversleep. But you failed. Anyway, please come in time for the reception. What? Now? Will I make it in time? Just hurry up, okay? We're running out of time. It doesn't matter if you're late, just be sure to come. Can I have a moment with you? Ursula, have you arrived at the venue? I'll pick you up at the entrance. No. What do you mean? You didn't even make it to the reception on time. Let me explain. I drank too much yesterday and my face is bloating. We'll have our pictures taken during the wedding, right? I don't want people to see me in this state and take my picture, so I'm not going. Please, don't be childish, Ursula. You are a beautiful woman. No one is more beautiful than you, so you don't have to worry about that. Are you sure? Of course. Well, I could stand next to you and be mistaken for your sister. I know I'm as good as you. I guess so. But I still don't want to go with this bloating face of mine. You're a woman too, so you understand that, don't you? Of course I understand. But today is the wedding day. We can't just change to another day. It's your son's wedding. Then it's even worse. There's no way I'm going to a wedding with this horrible face. I must always be beautiful. My beauty is no less than yours. If you feel that way, why didn't you refrain yourself from drinking too much? That's because I was having so much fun. I told you, I'm not going to the wedding, didn't I? Oh, you'll be fine if you take a bath in hot water and then cold water. Then I'm sure the bloating will go away. What? How can I be so brazen at my friend's house? Well, please hurry to the wedding venue anyway. I'll ask the staff at the wedding venue to help you. But... What's wrong? What if I get burned by the hot water? My beautiful skin will be ruined. You just need to adjust the water temperature. I don't want to make a scar on my beautiful face. I see. Then what are you going to do? We're running out of time, you know. You're so carefree, thinking that it's someone else's problem. Huh? What do you mean? Don't you feel sorry for me who overslept and missed the meeting? Gosh, just come to the ceremony as soon as possible, okay? Don't say it so easily. I have a bloating face. Yes. I'm saying I can't go with a face like this. Don't be selfish. I don't understand what you're trying to say. As a bride... You only need to make yourself look beautiful. You don't even care about me. I can't believe you want me to come to the wedding with a bloating or even burnt face. I didn't mean it that way. I genuinely just want you to come to the wedding. Don't get carried away just because you're younger than me. Think about my feelings too. I don't want to go to a wedding when I can't show everyone how beautiful I am. Do you understand? My heart is more delicate than yours. I'm sorry. I don't really understand what you're trying to tell me. If you're telling me that you won't dress up and put on some extra makeup, I might change my mind. I'm letting my makeup artist and the staff at the wedding venue to do their job properly. So there's nothing I can do to change it. 
Or rather, you just don't want to do it, right? Because you don't want me to look better than you. That's not the point. I just want you to come and witness our wedding. Will I quit? Quit what? I've been very tired since this morning. I beg your pardon? I'm tired of being rushed by you, and I'm still stuck here because you're bullying me. So you need to cancel the wedding today. I can't do that. The main event is coming up soon, Ursula. I've already decided. The wedding has to be another day. Give me a break. Stop being selfish. Don't talk to me like that. Just do what you're told. I'm sorry, but I can't help you. You're so persistent. I told you I don't want to go because my face is bloating. There's nothing I can do to help you with that. If I don't go, you have no choice than to cancel the wedding. Because a wedding without the groom's mother is just like French dinner without main dish. Sorry, I don't understand. I think the main dish should be the bride and groom. What are you talking about? In terms of glamour, of course, the main dish is me, right? Are you going to have a wedding without a main dish? I still don't get it. Anyway, I'll pay for your cab, so please come to the ceremony now. We need you here. Ursula, did you catch a cab? We're still on time for the ceremony. I've changed the time for dressing. I've also asked the makeup artist to do your makeup perfectly when you arrive here. You don't have to worry about anything. I wonder why you can't understand what I've been trying to tell you. I told you, I don't want to go today because I'm not in perfect condition. That's why I want you to postpone the wedding. I understand how you feel. If we postpone, there will be a cancellation fee. Well, of course. And if we book a new venue, you'll have to pay extra money. In case we postpone the wedding, are you willing to pay for those fees? Absolutely not. It's not even my wedding. Why should I pay? Seems that you have no common sense at all, Allison. With all due respect, I need to tell you that we don't have extra money to book a new wedding venue or pay for the cancellation fee. We have no choice than to go on with the wedding. So what? Can you please hurry up and come to the wedding venue now? We can't postpone it. I told you I don't want to. There's no way I can go with this bloating face. I see. You finally understand what I'm saying? Are you telling me that you don't want to come to the wedding? That's right. I've told you a thousand times. Understood. Then I'll tell the ceremony staff that you won't come. Are you okay with that? Of course it's fine. Well then, please directly tell your husband and son that you won't come. Why do I have to go through all that trouble? What? You were the one who's saying that you're not coming. So you need to take the responsibility by telling your own family about that. You're the one who should be thinking about that. What a stupid woman. You drank too much last night and overslept. You don't want to go to the wedding because your face is bloating. Do you want me to tell your son and husband about that? You really are incompetent. You really don't know what you're talking about. You don't need to explain the details. You can just make up any reason you want, like I'm not feeling well or something. I can't believe you want me to make up a reason for your absence. It's my precious wedding day and you're asking me to postpone it? It's your fault for trying to look more beautiful than me. I'm the victim here. It's all your fault. You should have taken good care of the main dish. Hey, my husband hasn't come home. Do you have any idea about what's going on? The wedding has been postponed, right? Do you know where he is? Your husband is still around here. Oh, glad to hear that he's still with you guys. I'm sleeping off my hangover. Tell him to get some painkiller on the way home. Hangover, huh? That's the reason why you couldn't come to the wedding. Now I understood. 
That's not the main reason, anyway. By the way, I need to tell you something. What? I don't have a good feeling about this. In the absence of the groom's mother, I'm happy to report that the wedding went off without a hitch. What are you talking about? Are you really that upset that it was postponed? Stop making stupid jokes. I'm not joking, okay? Without me as the main dish, there's no way you can go on with the wedding. You're wrong. The people who attended celebrated in a big way. They were very happy that you, who always brag and complain a lot, was not there. They were very happy to see me instead. Enough already! I don't want to hear more lies from you. I told you I wasn't joking or lying. I never said that I agreed to postpone the wedding. What? I asked you whether you want to come to the wedding or not, and you told me that you're not coming. Am I wrong? You're right. Because I'm not coming, you decided to postpone the wedding, right? No, I didn't. You couldn't make it, so I just have to go on with the wedding without your presence. Huh? So you're telling me that you had a wedding without the beautiful groom's mother? Yes, because me and my husband are the main actors. How could you be so selfish? I've never heard of a wedding without the groom's mother. It was my first time too. I don't want to waste my money and time for a selfish woman like you. If I cancel the wedding and rebook the ceremony, it would cost us a fortune. I can't waste that kind of money. You can't just decide that on your own. First of all, a wedding without the groom's mother is out of the question. My husband would never allow it. You're just making fun of me, aren't you? No, your husband agreed right away. Huh? Now the payback begins. Huh? What are you talking about? I just told your husband about everything. That you drank too much last night. Not only that, you texted me that you don't want to come to the wedding just because your face is bloating. In the end, you also said that I should postpone the wedding for your sake. Now, your husband is well aware of the situation. Huh? I can't believe you just did that. I'm going to get scolded by my husband. My son will be mad too. I have no doubt they will. They were very upset. Really? It's all your fault. What are you going to do to solve this? I can't do anything to help you. It's your own fault. I guess you have no choice but to solve it on your own. Stop blabbering nonsense. I have an advice for you. I think you should let your husband and son know before they get angry at you. I can't. I'm too scared to do that. When you do something wrong, you should apologize honestly. Didn't your parents teach you that when you were a child? I'm not a child. Don't joke around at a time like this. I'm not joking. You should apologize. After all, you overslept and missed your son's big day. Oh no. By the way, I need to tell you something. What is it now? When your husband and son saw me exchanging messages with you, they immediately decided to go back home. They're taking your elder sister with them too. I think they'll arrive at the house soon. What the? Why didn't you tell me earlier? I forgot all about it. Because I wanted to tell you that the wedding went well. How could you forget something so important? Oh, I just heard the doorbell ring. Well, looks like it's sooner than I expected. Anyway, Ursula... Please do your best to put your thoughts into words when explaining your situation. Wait a minute. Hey, what's going on? I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't pretend that you know nothing about this. You know something, don't you? About what? My husband suddenly asked for a divorce. What? Is that so? Stop being a hypocrite. You know something, don't you? Marriage-related problem is delicate, so I don't want to interfere. Speaking of which... What? If you know something, tell me quickly. 
Your husband said that your attitude and language towards me are very rude. Huh? I'm only doing what most mothers-in-law do when they're dealing with their daughters-in-law. Since you're my son's wife, I can at least be a little stern with you. You always go out as you please. Besides, you were also spending your husband's money without permission. Is that true? Well, you see, I'm beautiful, right? That's why I have so many friends and they often ask me out. My monthly allowance is not enough. I see. Looks like it's hard to keep up with friends when you're married. I have to be very careful too. But... What's wrong? I can't believe my husband just asked me for divorce just because I overslept at the wedding day. I didn't expect my husband would be furious over something like that. What do you mean? I think what you've done was intolerable. Oh, there's one more thing I need to tell you. Could you just say it all in one sentence? I'm sorry. I left out something important. You were together with another man, weren't you? What do you mean? I heard from your husband that, the day before your son's wedding, you were together with a man you're having an affair with. What? Affair? Are you sure about that? If that's true, no wonder your husband and son are so angry. He's not my cheating partner. He was my friend. So you were sleeping with him and overslept? Yes, he's just a friend. But it was just the two of you, wasn't it? And I suggest you stay at his place the night before your son's wedding? I don't think he's just a friend of yours. I can understand if you're staying at one of your female friend's house, but you didn't. Let me explain. He's just a friend. There's no point of explaining that to me. You need to discuss that with your husband since you are still a married couple. Did I make myself clear to you? Bye then. Hold on a sec. Hey. Now what? I told you to talk it over with your husband, didn't I? Have you done that? Well, actually, he wouldn't listen to me. He insisted on divorcing me. I can understand that. You've spent a lot of his money on your affair. This morning, when you came out of your cheating partner's house, a friend of my husband took your pictures. What? Is that true? Yes, he showed it to me during the reception. He said that since the woman he saw looked just like you, he decided to take a picture for evidence. No way. As long as there's proof, there's no excuse. Then what am I supposed to do? I don't have the answer to that question, but I think all you can do is apologize sincerely. You're not seriously thinking about the solution because you think that you have nothing to do with this matter, right? It's none of my business anyway. I have never cheated in my whole life and I never will. My husband is screaming at me to get out of here right now. Sorry to hear that. Please go apologize quickly. So tell me, did you apologize sincerely? Well, my husband insisted about getting a divorce. He's not going to forgive me. I see. My elder sister, who's here with me, is apologizing to him. She told me that she wants to take me back to the countryside. Seriously? Your sister said that? She said it's my fault. Of course it's your fault. I don't think there's anything your sister can do to help you. No. I don't want to go to my sister's house. I want to continue living with my husband. Listen to me, Ursula. How long are you going to run away from the reality? Do you realize what you've done? What you did with your cheating partner means that you're betraying your husband and son. It's only natural that they won't forgive you. I think you should take a responsibility for that. It's not that simple. You know I have a hangover and I'm still suffering, don't you? It's not fair to bully me who's currently in a difficult circumstance. That's why I told you to stop fooling around and face the reality. I don't want to waste my time responding to your lame messages over and over again. I'm busy, so I want you to solve the problem immediately. 
Just stop being selfish, okay? I don't want a divorce. I don't want to leave this house. You must convince my husband and son. I'm counting on you, Allison. If you convince them, I'm sure they will forgive me. I'm sick of hearing your nonsense. I shudder in fear and disgust whenever I think that someone like you will be my mother-in-law. So I will not persuade your husband and son. Don't be so cold. I have no one else to rely on but you now. I don't want you to depend on me. You almost ruined my wedding. If it were possible, I would have asked you to leave too. Well then, I know it's been a short time, but thank you for your hospitality until today, Ursula. Wait a minute. You need to help me, Allison. After that, I rushed to my in-law's house. Ursula was in tears and begged me for forgiveness. I pretended not to know her. In the end, she reluctantly agreed to divorce her husband. Then, her sister took her back to the countryside. My father-in-law was very upset, but when I saw his shoulders slumped after his wife left, I suggested that he move in with me and my husband. He quietly smiled and agreed to my suggestion. Now, my father-in-law, my husband, and I live together peacefully in a large house. I don't know what happened to Ursula after that. I'm sorry to suddenly contact you, Clara. I'm sorry, but who is it? Are you sure that you're talking to the right person? Of course I am! You are Clara, right? Well, that's my name. Who are you anyway? Oh, I should have introduced myself first. My name is Violet. I'm sorry, I can't remember you. Do I know you? No, this is the first time I've contacted you. That's why I said I was sorry for texting you out of the blue. Oh, yeah, I remember that. How can I help you then? You are pregnant, aren't you? How did you find out about that? If you are a salesperson for a company that sells baby-related products, I must say that I don't need them. Well, for your information, I'm not a salesperson. Then what do you want from me? I don't know you and you just texted me out of the blue. It's quite scary, you know. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, I'm Damien's ex-girlfriend. Seriously? Yes. Before you and Damien got together, we were together for three years. We had a pretty intense relationship. Oh, I see. I know it's none of my business, but... So what does an ex-girlfriend want from me? I want to report something to you. What is it? I'm now Damien's current girlfriend. Surprising report, right? I don't get it. I told you, I'm Damien's girlfriend now. Who else would it be? Well, Damien is married to me, so there must be some sort of misunderstanding here. I know that you're married to Damien. It's impossible for you to be his girlfriend then. That's why I texted you. I want you to divorce him. Huh? I got back together with Damien, so I want you out of our life. He can't have two wives. Damien doesn't love you anymore, you know, because he's crazy about me now. What are you talking about? We're going to have a baby soon. Are you trying to destroy our family? Since you got pregnant, I heard you haven't taken care of Damien at all. I feel sorry for him. What do you mean? Who told you that? You quit your job and just hanging around at home? You don't even do the house chores. Damien said that he's fed up with you. He also said that he didn't find you attractive as a woman anymore. That's when he met me again by chance. He said that if he were to get married, he would marry me instead of you. I think it's because I'm very attractive. Did Damien tell you all that? That's a lie, isn't it? I'm not lying. Damien doesn't even want to talk to you anymore. 
so he asked me to talk to you directly. That's how I got your number. I can't believe it. It just doesn't make any sense that Damien refused to talk to me directly. What's wrong? Are you mad at me? You scare me. I probably don't need to tell you this, but I quit my job because the doctor told me that I need more rest for the sake of my baby. Of course, Damien agreed to that. For the baby's sake, huh? Anything else? That's why I couldn't do house chores. I wasn't just hanging around. The doctor told me not to move more than the bare minimum. He said it will harm the baby. Damien went to the hospital with me, so he was there when the doctor explained about that. I thought you knew that. But pregnancy is not a disease, you know. The doctor might have told you not to move around too much. But you just didn't want to work or do your chores, didn't you? You're being lazy. How can you say such a thing when you're a woman too? Who knows that you may end up in the same way too? If I were you, I would never skip housework just because I'm pregnant. I will do my best for my husband. Even now, I'm working hard taking care of the house and Damien too. What do you mean by that? Oh, I'm pregnant with his child too. No kidding. That's why I want you to divorce Damien as soon as possible. I want to get officially married and give birth to the baby. After that, I'll live happily ever after in that big house with my baby and Damien. That's just unbelievable. Anyway, I understand what's going on. That's all I have to say. I'm glad that you finally understood. It's natural for Damien to be disgusted by a selfish wife like you. I can understand that. Then, for his sake and for the sake of the child, please file for divorce quickly. I'm due to give birth next week, and I'm not in a position to go through the formalities right now. Please wait a little longer until things settle down after my baby is born. Well, it can't be help. You really are good at using pregnancy as an excuse, aren't you, Clara? I think I'll use the same trick too and skip work. Anyway, I can't do it right now. I understand. Well then, please take care of the procedure right after your baby is born. I'll be waiting to hear from you. Clara, reply to me. Clara, are you there? Why don't you reply to me? Violet, I'm sorry for taking so long to reply. I've been so busy. Will you at least reply right away? Do you know how many times I contacted you? That's why I apologized. Taking care of a newborn baby is hard work. Are you really going to make excuses like that and not file for divorce? You promised me that you would file the divorce after the baby was born, didn't you? Yes, I've decided to get a divorce. I see. Then please file the divorce papers as soon as possible. I can't wait any longer. By the way, just to confirm, are you guys really dating each other? Are you doubting me? This picture was taken the other day when we went to the local church together. We prayed for a safe delivery for my baby together. See? Now you know that I'm not lying, right? I see. The second one is a commemorative shot taken after we went for shopping for baby-related goods. I was so happy that Damon was so kind to me that day. Lovey-dovey couple, aren't we? Yes, thanks for the definitive proof. It's perfect. Proof? What are you talking about? Proof of the affair. That's what I wanted. Just saying that you're pregnant with Damon's child is enough, but I need more proof. When your baby is born, we need to do a DNA test. So until then, I still have to wait for the proof. Why are you collecting proof? Did you think I was lying to you? No. I'm just trying to get alimony. Alimony? 
Isn't it obvious? You were having an affair with my husband, and that happened while I was pregnant. We didn't have an affair. We just got back together. I told you, Damon was my ex-boyfriend, didn't I? Are you nuts? Excuse me? Ex-girlfriend or not, if you have a relationship with a married man, it's adultery. And adultery comes at a price. Really? What's the price? Looks like you're an idiot that you don't even understand such a simple thing. How rude of you! I'm not an idiot, but I can't help it. Damon's gonna pay for the alimony. He loves me, so he won't let me pay. What are you talking about? You really don't get it, do you? What do you mean by that? Of course, I'm going to charge you alimony too. Why? Isn't alimony only between husband and wife? You can also claim alimony from the adulterous partner. I thought you are well aware about that. Well, I have no choice then. If I can be with Damon by doing that, I don't mind. I didn't expect you would accept it easily. Alimony is nothing. It's more beneficial for me if you divorce Damien. Are you kidding me? Of course not. Not only I'm able to get married to a talented person like Damien, but I'll also be able to live in that big house. Oh, I see. Then you can pay the alimony, right? Yes, I can. So just hurry up and get a divorce. I've finally made it this far, so there's no way I'm going to give up. I'm thrilled. I understand. Then I'll go through the formalities. Since I was also able to obtain evidence of Damien's infidelity, I decided to proceed with the divorce. It seems that Violet is aiming for the big house that we are living in now. However, Violet doesn't seem to know the truth about this house and Damien. From here on, it's my turn to avenge Violet. Hey, Clara! Clara! Answer the phone! Come on! Gosh, you again? You finally replied to me! You need to explain everything to me! I have no idea what you are talking about. The amount of alimony! Is there something wrong with it? It's not right, is it? Why is it so high? One million dollars for alimony is insane. There's no way I can pay for that. That's the standard fee for infidelity. Besides, you said it's fine because the benefits of me getting a divorce with Damon are greater, right? Huh? There's no way that this is the average amount for alimony. Why do you think so? If you do a little research, you'll find out. I didn't break any stuff, and you're demanding such a high amount. You're trying to rob me, aren't you? I would never do such a thing. It's really the average amount. Besides, you destroyed my marriage. That's... If you don't agree, let's go to court. I don't mind at all. If we do that, the company will find out. It can't be help. I'll pay. If I marry Damien... Even if I don't have any savings, I'll have a high household income. It won't be a problem. I'll also have my own house, so I'll be fine. I mean, if you are already divorced, can't you just get the heck out of the house? You know what? You keep pestering me to get a divorce quickly, but you haven't done any research, have you? What? I'm not moving out of this house. I think you misunderstood something. That house is in Damien's name, right? It's only natural that you would leave if you get divorced. Did Damien say that? He didn't say it clearly, but he said that it's where he lives. That means it's in his name, right? Well, we were a family, so I'm sure it's his house too. Unfortunately, it's not in Damien's name. I don't trust you. Then whose house is that? It's my parents' house. No kidding! My parents retired and moved to the countryside to start their own farm. We live there to take care of the house. 
since our house is quite big, my relatives gather here during Thanksgiving and Christmas holidays to celebrate, so I can't let go of this house. No way! I'm not telling a lie. So, are you telling me that I can't live in that big house with Damien and our child? That's right. I've sent Damien's belongings to your house just now. You two should find a new house together soon. Oh no! But with Damien's high income, we can get ourselves a new house. Instead of just such a big, old-fashioned house, we'll build a nice modern house. Stylish house. Isn't it nice? Why do you think Damon has a high income? Huh? Because when we met again, he was driving a very nice car. And his business card said CEO as his title. So he must have started a successful business, right? That's amazing. Did you look at that business card carefully? What? The name of the company, his last name, and so on. Company name? Damon's last name? It wasn't his family name, right? Didn't you realize that? I don't remember, but his last name seems different anyway. I can't believe this. Looks like you noticed that at last. Damien is the successor of my father's company. Is that so? I didn't hear anything about that. The car he was driving was mine. It's my favorite car. No, you're lying. My hobby is to drive a nice car, so I had a sports car. But after I got pregnant, I came to the conclusion that a van will suit us better, so I sold that sports car. You sold it? Yes, it is difficult to put a baby in a sports car. I don't think I'll need it for a while from now on. But even though you're divorced, Damien is already the president. Then your father's company belongs to him. Besides, you and him will be splitting the common property, right? Give me half the money you've got from selling the sports car. Sorry, Violet. I must say that neither of them will be yours. Why? The sports car was purchased when I was single, so it isn't a joint property. Even if Damien is still the president, more than a majority of the shares are owned by my father and his subordinates. Moreover, Damien was voted out of his position as the president at the meeting of the board of directors. Well, he deserves that anyway. I can't believe this is really happening! And of course, in this divorce, I'm charging Damien for alimony and child support. I'm sure he'll be paying them from now on. Which means... As you can see, Damien is broke and unemployed. No! We're going to have a baby soon! I think it's good for both of you to cope with that together. Good luck. Clara, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do this. I apologize. So please don't ask me or Damon for alimony. Please, I beg you. Please don't be so silly. Think about what kind of humiliation I've been through. Why should I help you when you and Damon were the ones who caused this huge problem? But I don't have that much money, and I won't be able to live from now on if I need to pay for alimony. You just need to have Damon work harder, and you will also have to work after the baby's born. Oh no! I was supposed to be a happy housewife living in a big house! Welcome to reality, Violet. Will you somehow forgive me? Impossible. Please go through a lawyer for the rest. Now, if you'll excuse me. Thus, Violet was no longer able to get a big house or a high-income husband. With an unemployed husband joining her, she was forced to live in a small house. Damien's new job doesn't go well, that he's struggling to make ends meet. Violet returned to her day job right after giving birth, but it was not enough. She has to work at night to earn money for living expenses and the alimony. She is struggling every day while taking care of her newborn child. She totally deserves that. My name is Layla. My parents are divorced and I live with my dad. But a few years ago, he remarried. 
I wished for my dad's happiness. However, my stepmother Harriet often bullies me. I tried my best not to worry my dad, but the other day, Harriet finally did something unbelievable. Layla, it looks like I have to pay for your textbooks next time. Can you bring me about two thousand dollars? I can pay the school myself, so you don't have to do that for me. Don't hesitate. I know that you're busy with your studies. I'll pay it on behalf of you. I don't want you to worry about other things. Just leave it to me, okay? Okay then. I'll withdraw the money today. Make sure you pay the school on time. Thank you in advance. Harriet, I was called by a teacher at school today. She said I have to pay five hundred dollars for the textbooks. You told me that it was two thousand dollars. My teacher told me that I'm the only one who hasn't paid it yet. Could you explain what happened? What? That can't be true. Are you telling me that you lied about the amount? What about the payment then? School often needs money unexpectedly, you know. That's why I decided to keep one thousand five hundred dollars in advance. So you didn't pay for my textbooks after all? I gave you the money a long time ago. What's going on? Well, I was going to do it tomorrow. You can't do it tomorrow. It's long overdue. I said I'll do it tomorrow. I'll take care of it. Don't worry. I can't trust you anymore. You've been lying and trying to take advantage of me. I don't want to worry my dad, so I'm doing my best to keep my mouth shut. I won't keep quiet if you're stealing my money too. That's not true. I love you, Layla. I'm just trying to support you, okay? This time, it's my fault. I'll be careful from now on, so this will never happen. Okay then. Please definitely pay tomorrow, and give me back the other one thousand five hundred dollars. If you don't. I'll tell my dad. It's a lot of money for me. Yes, but your dad likes me, and that's why we're together. So it doesn't matter what you say to him, since it won't make any change. He always thanked me for taking care of you. He has a lot of faith in me. Anyway, I worked very hard for school, so please make sure you make the payment tomorrow. Hey. You haven't paid yet. Come on, I already paid for the textbooks myself. So give me back the remaining money. Layla, I'm sorry. I forgot that I was going on a trip today and couldn't pay you. I need the money for my trip. I'll be in trouble if I don't have the money. Can you just lend me two thousand dollars? That's impossible. That was your plan all along. You lied about paying my textbooks. That's disgusting. I would never lend you any money. Just pay me back, okay? Well, you're a very inconsiderate girl. All right then. We're mother and daughter anyway. I've always been good to you. What did you say? I know that you're not going to pay me back anyway. Forget it. I don't care anymore. I'll at least buy you some souvenirs. Well, see you then. Layla, I got a notice that my credit card can't be used due to insufficient balance. You stole two thousand dollars from my account without my permission, right? Do you know what you're doing? It's a crime to steal someone's money. Huh? I explained everything to my dad, and he took my side. He said that you were probably splurging on credit cards during your vacation anyway. He withdrew two thousand from the account while you were gone. And gave it back to me. Besides, how dare you accuse me of stealing? You were the one who stole from me. You told your dad about everything. I don't believe you. Stop lying because you're frustrated. It seems like you've been spending all the money my dad gave you to pay for my tuition and other stuff. You were just using me as some sort of ATM. My dad knows that too, and he's mad at you. He apologized to me, even though he didn't do anything wrong. I feel sorry for him. 
That's not true. I was going to pay you back later. It's just I forgot to tell you. Don't be so mean to me, Layla. I'm sorry, and I want you to convince your dad. You don't work, but you want to spend money you got from my dad and me. That's disgusting. I know that's the main reason why you got married to my dad. Dad said he's divorcing you. He's going to ask for his money back and alimony. Well, it's obvious anyway. From now on, you're going to have to work by yourself to pay back the money. Good luck with that. Layla, I just got a notice that my credit card can't be debited due to a low balance. What am I supposed to do now? I'm your mother. You're not going to abandon me, are you? Please, help me. After hearing my story, my dad immediately did some research and apologized to me. Then, he divorced Harriet. Harriet still contacts me to give her some money without telling my dad, but I ignore her. My dad told me that he loves me. Then, he gave Harriet a hard lecture. It seems that Harriet has no will to work. She seems to want to live as a parasite, but unfortunately, she has no relatives who want to support her. I'm done today. I hate to feel like I'm working for a living. I've just finished work. How about you, Matthew? I'm almost done. I don't know why I get exhausted every day. Maybe you will be home about the same time? I might be late. I mean, I'll be late. Oh, you had some plan today? Did your boss ask you to go out for a drink or something? No, nothing like that. If that's the case, I'll turn it down immediately. <laughs> then what? Yeah, I got a call from mom today. What did she say? You know she lives alone now. She seems to be lonely. I didn't have to worry about her before because there was dad, but... After your father passed away, she's been very sad. I'm sure she misses him. And she needed something from you? No, nothing special. She just wanted to hear my voice. Then why? Well, I miss her too. I need to see her regularly. I see. But you didn't go see your father that much, did you? You didn't even see him that often. Isn't that normal for Dad? Is that so? Dad was very strict, so Mom protected me. She was always kind and I love her. Okay, so you don't need dinner today? If you don't need it, maybe I'll eat out and go home. Help yourself. I haven't had mom's dish in a while and I'm sure she'll cook for me, so I'll ask her. Oh well, then I'll just go eat out. Please have dinner with her. Okay, bye. Matthew, how long are you going to stay there? Isn't it time for bed for your mother? It's not a good idea for staying so long, even if it's your parents' house. Oh, right. It's already late. We were talking about the old days, and we were laughing a lot and having a good time. That sounds like fun, but maybe it's time to leave? It's about her bedtime, right? I know, but she's still up. She seems fine. Well, it's my mom, so I don't have to worry about that much. That's not how it works for me. It looks like you went to your parents' house because I don't do chores. I'm trying my best. Come home and take a shower. Oh, actually, I took a shower before I ate dinner. Huh? Mom let me take a shower since she thought it would be more relaxing if I took it first. Hey, you know, you're not a child anymore. You're married and you have a family. You can't keep relying on your mother. Why are you saying that? She's doing everything for me and you're telling me to turn it down? No, that's not what I meant. That's what it means, right? See, you're mad at me. Or perhaps you're jealous. No, not like that. 
I'm just considering common sense and telling you. You visit your mother often. Is that okay? Why are we even married then? Yeah, you're right. I know. Whoa, what is it? I'm a genius. I came up with a good idea. Huh? A good idea? Yep, but I won't tell you now. <laughs> I have a bad feeling about this. Don't say like that. Anyway, I'll go home. You're incoherent, but... Fine. Well then, be safe on your way home. Thanks. Matthew? I don't understand. I came home and your mother is here. Why? I didn't tell you, but Mom and I decided to move in together. We miss each other, so... What? Excuse me? You didn't even ask me about it. How can you decide such an important matter on your own? I really can't believe it. She's my parent. Why should I ask you for permission? It's my decision, right? This is our house. Of course, your mother is our family. But we are the ones living here. Isn't it normal to tell me first? Yeah, we're family, so you should know that we miss each other. Hold on. I don't want you to treat her like a family only at time like this. Yes, we are family, but you know how mean your mother's relatives were to me when we got married? Have you forgotten? You didn't care at all. No, but I don't think they did it on purpose either. God, we're not getting anywhere. Anyway, I'm not going to live with your mother. Our house is not that big. I know. Then we can make a room for her. That way, even if it's not big enough, I'm sure mom will only spend time in that room. Huh? What are you saying? I'm saying we can't make that room. We only have two rooms. One for your hobbies and the other for our workplace. I sometimes bring work home, so... You can work at the dining room table. Then we'll have an empty room. You don't have to do that. Her house is big enough. It would be better if she could use that big house as she pleases. Then we'll move in? What a fool! Don't be silly. You don't have that kind of time or money, do you? Moving is not that easy, you know. Do you understand? Then, you just have to put up with it. Huh? Are you crazy? We are husband and wife, but deciding to live together or move out on your own? I don't think any wife would agree to that. You're so narrow-minded. Can't you be more kind to your husband and parent-in-law? How can you say that? You didn't come to my father's funeral. Let me tell you. Your father and mother didn't come either. Well, I didn't say anything, because they live too far away, and it would be difficult for them to come. You're not a Christian, right? I had no idea what kind of funeral it would be. I was just wondering, and the time passed. You can make any number of excuses later. You could have just asked me. There's no one in my family who would accuse you of not knowing. Well, yes. In fact, the main reason was that it was too much trouble to go. <laughs> I knew it. I knew from the beginning. So, you know, I don't want people like that to say I'm narrow-minded or not nice. Well, what's the point of talking about it now? Just do as I say. When mom comes over, please help her. Make it easy for her to spend time in our home. What? How selfish.
I left early today. What? Why? Are you sick? Nope. I have to go home early sometimes since mom misses me. What? She's not a child. I know, but I was worried that she might be lonely. I couldn't calm down when I thought about it. I felt like I had to go home right away. I'm such a sweet son. What is that? I'm speechless. In the first place, you said we'd never lived together before we got married. You were lying? Because if I have said we'd lived together, you might not have married me, right? My ex-girlfriend dumped me. Mom is important to me. And if you marry me, she'll be your mother-in-law. So, it's only natural. You and my ex are both crazy. You guys are the ones who are crazy. What the hell? The other day, your mother, she thought I wasn't looking and tried to put razor blades in my food. I was horrified. What? How could she do such a thing? You're just being paranoid. <laughs> no. I took a picture of it too. I was pouring the soup in a dish. She said she would do it. And she was sneaking around doing something behind my back. I knew she was doing something bad. That's misunderstanding. That's how you're trying to make her look bad. Huh? She's absolutely the bad person, putting a razor blade in the soup. Am I like a popular star or something? From now on, I'm not going to ask her to help me cook. I don't want to get hurt. You, do you feel good saying bad things about mom? She's your husband's mother. Then why don't you take care of her yourself? I have a job. I can't stay at home every day. When I made spaghetti, she told me she couldn't eat my food. She said she had never eaten such a disgusting dish. If her son is not there, she's just a selfish old hag. Hey, you call my parent a hag? That's what happens when you don't cook the food she wants to eat. If she says your cooking is bad, you should learn how to cook. I'm telling you, why don't you cook for her? From now on, I'll only cook for myself. Hey, what's this lunchbox? What do you mean? What do you mean? Only apple and crackers? Huh? At least I made it for you. <laughs> you have something to eat. If you have a problem with it, why don't you make it yourself? I've already declared that I only cook for myself. Huh? I don't remember agreeing to it. Oh, really? But I definitely declared it. Then why don't you ask your mommy to cook for you? You're the one who said you wouldn't let mom cook. Besides, she can't get up in the morning. Don't you feel sorry for her if you force her to wake up? Huh? She seems to have a lot of energy. She forced me to live with us. She can't be a spoiled brat. Hey! Watch out for your language. You're my wife, remember? Just shut up, do your job and chores, and be good to me and mom. God, give me a break. When I asked her to make you a lunchbox, she said why she has to get up early for your lunch. It seems like it's too much work for her. She told me I, the wife, have to make it. She doesn't make it because it's a pain in the ass. Mom would never do such a thing. If you keep lying to me, I'll divorce you. Then let's divorce. What? 
I was thinking of holding out just a little longer, but I can't anymore. What? Are you saying we're breaking up? Yeah, that's the plan. Because, you know, you don't need me. You just want to be with your mommy, right? I'm not a housekeeper for you guys. I didn't say you were a housekeeper. I'm telling you to do your duty as a wife. That's enough. What you people are doing is bullying. You can do this because you think of me as a housekeeper, not a wife. I'm a fool for realizing it now. <laughs> I'm sick of it. You're going to say that much? Then I'm done. I can have a good time with her even if I don't have you. If you can survive on your own, go for it. <laughs> I'm sure you'll suffer soon. <laughs> Let's see how long you can last. <laughs> I've been working with pride. I make enough money so that I don't have to worry about being alone. <laughs> well, I'll talk to the lawyer, so expect a document from him. Yeah, do as you like. I'll fill it out once I receive it. Avery. Where did you go? I said to divorce you emotionally, but I want you to come back. I can't tell you where I am, and I can't go back. Once I get all my stuff out of there, I'm going to get rid of you and your mother for good. <laughs> don't say like that. Mom always complains about me. Like, I don't cook well or I'm not good enough. I don't want to hear that every day. I know. <laughs> I told you the same thing, but you blame me for everything. You deserve it. Good luck with your mom. <laughs> That's not all. When I come home, there's a pile of garbage. I have to start by clearing off the table. That I've done every day. I've done it without complaining. I can't do that much. I don't want this house to be a dump anymore. Please, help me. A dump? That's the worst. I gotta get my stuff out of there. Hey, my stuff is safe, right? I don't know. Huh? Hey, give me one more chance. How about we start over as a proper couple? I'll help you with everything from now on. Help what? Huh? I'll help with uh, what I've been told. It's not enough to do what you're told. I can see you not making any actions. I know you well. I'll do whatever you want me to do. That's enough. I don't want anything from you. I'm going to work as hard as I want. I don't have time for you. Wait. You're going to leave me like this? I'm in real trouble. Were you such a cold woman? You're the cold one. When I was in trouble and asked you for help, you didn't do anything, did you? Besides, I'm a stranger now. I have no obligation to help you. Don't say that. I'll make her leave the house, so please start over with me. That will never happen. Your mother wants to live with her son. You'd better accept her wish. Bye-bye. <laughs> After the divorce, it seems that Mommy Boy continued to live with his mother, complaining. But the garbage was all over the place. She never cleaned the house or did the laundry. And she complained that the food was bad. In addition... He is forced to give her money to go out. And to top it all off, they charge me a huge property tax for my parents-in-law's house. Matthew started to hate her, who he used to love so much. I guess it's only natural, even though he's her son. <laughs> he left work early for her occasionally, and he got fired from his job after he was caught falsifying sales accounts. <laughs> I think he should be a full-time son and take care of his mom without leaving her side. 
I think that's what he deserves. <laughs> on the other hand, I am now living on my own, having a fulfilling work and personal life. I'm about to get promotion soon. Every day is amazingly comfortable. I will make an effort to continue this comfortable life. I am very glad that I was able to get away from that mommy boy. <laughs> Marion, long time no see. This is Paula. I'd like to talk to you for a minute. Do you have the time? Good evening, Paula. It's been a while. How are you? Well, you know, I'm doing just fine. Can I get to the point? Yes, what is it? Well, I heard that your son Brian is going back to school next month. So it's finally happening. Yes, that's right. He'll only be in the morning for a while to get used to it. It will be a little while before he can go to school all day. We are all very relieved. Above all, Brian is looking forward to it the most. I'm really happy for him. I see. I heard he had an incurable disease and underwent surgeries several times. I didn't expect it to take five years. Yes, you're right. It was tough. But Brian really did his best. But still, five years is a lot for a kid. Everyone has forgotten about him, you know that? If he's looking forward to it, he'll be disappointed. So you need to give him a reality check as soon as possible. I recall that he only made it to the middle of the first grade. He didn't go to school that often. I don't think most of the other kids in his class remember him. It can't be helped. All of them are elementary school students. But I'm sure some of them still remember Brian. I believe that he will be able to enjoy going to school again. I don't think so. His classmates won't remember him. It's been five years and they have all grown up. I'm sure they look different from back then. He may be treated like a transfer student. Well, that's probably true. But the kids were in the same class with him for the past five years. They came to visit Brian at the hospital. Some of them even sent us letters and cards. So I don't think that all of them have forgotten about him. Huh? Is that so? I've never met them. You never come to visit him at the hospital, Paula. No wonder you've never met them. All of them visited Brian at least once every six months or so. I don't think there's that much of a problem about the way they look. Most of the kids are really sweet. Brian was also put in a sixth grade class with a lot of kids who were in the same class as him during the first grade. I think he would be able to get along with them. I'm really grateful to the teachers for their support. Are you trying to tell me that I'm not nice since I didn't visit Brian at the hospital even once? You can't force someone to pay a visit. You shouldn't insult me for that. Please don't get me wrong. I didn't intend to insult you. I don't think I can trust you. Well, a weak and fragile little boy like Brian won't be able to keep up with his classmates in playing games outside and so on. It's only a matter of time before he isolates himself in class. Listen, Paula, it's true that my son was sick and spent most of his time in the hospital, but it's not right for you, his grandmother, to talk about him in such a discriminatory way. Oops, my bad. I didn't mean it that way. Are you sure about that? I think you're being a bit too harsh ever since we started our conversation. But it's true that Brian can't keep up with the stamina of the other healthy kids, right? I don't think there's any place for him at school when he comes back. Well, I think... The physical aspect will be hard for a while. I'm going to take my time until he gets used to it. And I don't think there are any kids who would ostracize him just because of that. I've met almost all of his classmates, and I don't think there are any kids who would leave him out of the group. You can't guarantee that anyway. Besides, it's hard for Brian to catch up for his study, isn't it? After all, his academic-related knowledge has stopped at the first grade level. It must be hard for him to keep up with the 6th grade subjects all of a sudden. Oh, 
I'm not so worried about his academic level. Even when he is in the hospital, when he is feeling well, he was willing to study. He got all the necessary handouts from his teachers. We taught him what we could, and there are even kids who help him study while I'm visiting him. I'm really grateful for all the help Brian has received from his friends. I'll have to thank them again when Brian gets out of the hospital. I see. I'm sure that you'll include me in the list of people you want to thank, won't you? What? Why should I do that? Because I'm Brian's grandmother. It's strange to thank a stranger but not a blood relative. But you never come to visit Brian. It's been so long since the last time you contacted me. You didn't seem at all concerned about my son. Shut up! Are you telling me that you're against me, your mother-in-law? I didn't mean to. Then you must thank me for my kindness. You got that? Hey, Marion, you're going on a trip when Brian gets out of the hospital, right? Yes, that's right. He's been coping so hard at the hospital for so long, so when he gets out, I'm planning to take him wherever he wants to go. I've been thinking about it since a long time ago. It's a trip to a place we can get to pretty soon, but... A place that's easy to get to? Yes. He had always wanted to go to the Disney World while he was in the hospital. I had never been there before. I thought we could go there since it was close by. So I'm thinking of taking him there as his reward. Oh, really? You're taking Brian to Disney World? But he only goes to school for half a day, right? It seems that he's just skipping school. I think you're being too lenient just because he's sick. No way. I wouldn't let him play all day. We'll go in the evening when we can see the parade and enjoy some rides that are not too strenuous. It's hard to buy some souvenirs in the park because of the crowds, so we'll just stick to the shops in the hotel. Stores in the hotel? Don't tell me you're staying at one of the official hotels. Yes, even though it's for Brian's health, I feel sorry for him if he could only enjoy one or two hours inside the park. If we stay at the official hotel, we can meet the characters there. We can enjoy our stay in the hotel without worries too. That's why. I think it's the best solution for our trip to the Disney World this time. Wow! Do you think such luxury is allowed? Luxury? Brian has put up with it for five years. I've consulted with the doctors and they've given me permission for that. I didn't say that. I'm saying it's extravagant to spend so much money just for leisure. Sick people should live modestly. I beg your pardon? That's up to us, isn't it? How we spend our time as a family? I don't think you can just tell us what to do. I am your husband's mother and your son's grandmother. We are family bonded by blood. So it's only natural that you listen to me. On the contrary, the only one who is not blood-related is you, Marian. Yes, my husband and son may be related to you by blood, but you were against our marriage. You almost insulated us, and now you're calling us family? Anyway, if you have a child with an incurable disease, you'll get insurance money and benefits, won't you? That's partly our tax money, so you're just profiting from Brian's illness. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to stay at such a fancy hotel. What are you talking about? It's not like what you thought it was. That kind of money will disappear with the cost of treatment. I don't want Brian and my husband to be in any trouble after he gets out of the hospital. While taking care of Brian, I also worked part-time. I was still working hard while draining our savings for the medical treatments. You don't know anything about it. You don't have the right to tell me what to do since you know nothing about what our family has been through until today. Besides, it's not polite to ask about money and personal matters even between family members. Are you even aware of that? You just want to make yourself look good, don't you? It's not like that. I just want Brian to get better. I want him to go to school like what he wishes for. Going to Disney World is something I've been promising Brian since he was in the hospital. No matter what you say, we will definitely go. If you insist that much, then I have no choice. You're going there next weekend, right? I'll go with you too then. 
Wait a minute. Why would you do that? As a grandmother, I'm going to check on my grandson. You seem to be holding a grudge that I didn't go visit him. That's why I decided that I'm going to visit you. And you should be grateful for that. I'll call the hotel on behalf of you. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you on the day, okay? It's such a big deal that Brian is getting out of the hospital. I'll celebrate with you too. Are you kidding me? Please don't do that. It's extremely annoying. Don't be shy. Let's celebrate with a big party together as a family. Listen to me, Paula. Please don't do that without my permission. Jeez, we won't be able to pay for your stay. Hey there, Marion. Congratulations again that Brian has been dismissed from the hospital. Are you watching the parade now? Or are you enjoying some rides? I don't have the park ticket. I went ahead to the hotel where you guys are staying. I'm having dinner right now. The food is gorgeous and delicious. The atmosphere is great too, as I expected. There's going to be a character show too. Good evening, Paula. Looks like you're having a great time. Well, it's the official hotel. You must be crazy if you're not excited. No matter how old you get, this kind of place is always fun, isn't it? By the way, I'm surprised that you booked a suite. I didn't expect to get the suite. Let's celebrate together in a luxury suite today. Oh, yeah. I want to go to the park tomorrow, so buy me a ticket, okay? Oh, what a wonderful thing to be able to play with other people's money. I'm in the hospital right now. Actually, Brian is still hospitalized. Huh? What are you talking about? He should be dismissed from the hospital today, right? You told me about that the other day. What do you mean that he's still in the hospital? It's... The day after you contacted me, Brian suddenly got a fever. We had to postpone the celebration until next month. But I... I mentioned your last name at the front desk and the receptionist let me in. So that means you didn't cancel the reservation, did you? The day Brian got a fever, the hotel added one more person under my name. I got a call from them. That person hung up the phone without telling them her name and they confirmed it with me. The hotel staff was confused. That's why I decided to give up the reservation. Oh, well, so I guess I can enjoy myself tonight. I'd appreciate that. I don't have to worry about the sick grandson anymore. Staying inside a suite is fabulous. Well then, I'll have a nice drink with room service. I'm in the mood for a party. Oh, and just to let you know, I'm not paying for any of your expenses. You will take care of everything. What? What are you talking about? I didn't even tell the hotel my name. It was your reservation to begin with. Of course, you're paying for everything, right? I mean, you paid in advance, right? No, I didn't. We were planning to pay on the spot on the day of the event. I didn't pay anything at all in advance. I gave the hotel your name also gave them your contact information. Please enjoy your stay. What? No, I can't pay. I assumed you would pay for it. I only brought about $50. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, but in the first place, I clearly said that I won't pay for you, but you still contacted the hotel. That's why I'm sure you can pay on your own. I don't have that kind of money either. I can't believe it. I have no choice. I'm going to get out of this hotel. If I'm not staying here, I don't have to pay. But you already started eating, right? Then you'll be charged for the meal. If you cancel on the same day, you'll be charged a cancellation fee. Cancellation fee? By the way, how much does it cost? I haven't checked, but isn't it 100%? I think it's the same for all hotels to cancel on the same day. If that's the case... I think it's best to pay the cancellation fee after staying at the hotel. Well, to begin with, it's your fault for insulting me, Marion. So the payment for this hotel is your responsibility. Come to the hotel tomorrow to pay it. I've never insulted you, Paula. 
It's true that you didn't come to visit Brian at the hospital. I had already given up on that, so I didn't want you to come. I'm sure Brian wouldn't be able to enjoy the park with an old lady he doesn't know sticking around us. Excuse me? What do you mean by the old lady? I'm talking about you. Since my husband and I got married, we've been almost completely insulated, and you've never even visited Brian often. You were mocking my son. How dare you call yourself grandmother after all these years? You called him a weak and sick boy? It's offensive, so please don't say that ever again. Me, my husband, and Brian have no intention of having anything to do with you in the future. And of course, we won't pay you, so you'll have to do it yourself. Oh no! Oh, and I've told your husband about this. What? What did you tell him? If my husband finds out, he'll be furious with me. I guess so. I don't think I'll have anything to do with you from now on. I'll block your line and bid you farewell. What? Wait a minute. I don't have the money to pay. I really don't. How am I supposed to explain to my husband? I don't know. If you don't have any money, you'll just have to ask your husband to lend some money to you. Well, have fun at the hotel. Goodbye. Wait, Marian. In the end, Paula paid for the hotel with her husband's credit card. She said her stay at the hotel was supposed to be a gift from me. Her husband was furious with her. He told her to work to pay back the money she spent at the hotel. So Paula decided to take a part-time job. Brian's dismissal from the hospital was delayed for about two weeks. Once he overcame his fever, he recovered well and was safely discharged from the hospital. We were able to go on a long-awaited trip to Disney World as a family. He is gradually getting used to his new class at school. He seems to enjoy studying and playing with his friends at school. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and leave us a comment down below. It means a lot to us. See you next time.